Before we kick off the episode, mm. um, I think we should just give a little warning that this uh, has a lot of talk about mental health, a lot of talk about suicide. Um, and if this is triggering for anyone, perhaps um, be warned, maybe don't listen to it. Um, or if it is, we put loads of links in the description uh, where you can go to to look for help. Hi, I'm Molly Mers on Private Parts. I am the pop star with the biggest forehead in the industry. And uh, I'm here to talk to the wonderful guys today about my life and uh, looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, there much. we go. That was great. Yeah, that, did that feel awkward? <laughs> that felt awkward, didn't it? <laughs> no. That you felt a little awkward. It's not that big. I don't know. I just, every time I look in the mirror, I think, fuck, my forehead looks big. Mate, I, I, why, I went and had the hair transplant. Did you? I did the front of my head, yeah. And now, if, I can, if I'm being vulnerable from the top, <laughs> when you get a hair transplant, right, they take it from the back of your head or the side of your head because right. it, never, it never goes. When you do that, I did it too early. So I've got a strip here. I'm now receding behind it. <laughs> so I'm just going to be left with like a Jonah Lomu is, at the front no, of my... have, you, have you never seen Steve McLaren? No. Football manager. Yeah, yeah. He always used to have this big tuff of hair here and just nothing behind. It's like a just reverse The Freddie Lundberg. <laughs> yeah, the Freddie Lundberg. Maybe had... start a whole new trend. <laughs> what? Have like the reverse mullet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get curtains, but I nothing like behind it. it. <laughs> I can see you on a TV advert now talking about the reverse mullet. Hi guys, you can have what I've got. <laughs> Go do to www.reversedmallet.com. <laughs> do you do you um first mullet? Sorry. Uh, do you do you get this though? Because because also being being in the music industry and also being on TV all the time. Did you for ages? Maybe because we're we're not older, but we're a bit older now. When you first started, how insecure were you about the way that you looked and things like that? Everything. I everything. Mm, actually, tell a lie. First, the first year I was pretty sweet about it. I weren't that bothered. Um, and then it was. I was in. I was on a holiday. And I was in Barbados. I, must, I, I saw I've you in Barbados. you in Barbados. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely met. You see a lot I of people remember. in Barbados. This yeah, I was, I was. Uh, we were probably very drunk. I was, I was uh, very drunk. I remember thinking, I remember thinking, I just seen Ollie and I was like, and I remember waking up the next day and being like, wow, I was really any, familiar and drunk. Any, no, I, and I think I was with all my mates and we were all a bit too familiar and drunk. Wait, wait, I want to hear this. So when you were in Barbados, what happened? You were just, you were saying this story. No, no, no. It. So there was a story. Um, I was on the beach thinking like, you know, I've just had like a great successful first year. I've come off a reality TV show. I'm feeling really good about myself. I'm single. I'm with my mates. We're in Barbados. And then bang, a paparazzi get a photo of me on the beach. And the headline was, uh, Oli Mers looks like he's having a whale of a time. And obviously oh I had tucked into Christmas dinner. Yeah. It was New Year's, well, it must've been first week in January. Yeah. I'm drinking, I'm eating everything. And my belly looked massive. And that was probably the first time I really thought, oh yeah, I've really got to do something about that. And then that's when different insecurities came in as well. Then my hair and my body and my physique. And then I was like, yeah, I need to really start looking after myself. And I didn't. For about three or four years, I yeah. thought I always thought about it, but never quite. It's it's not till now, actually. Fun enough, in my sort of late thirties, I've started actually taking a lot more care in my appearance and what I look like and stuff. It's weird, really. But but when you had because you you played football, did that just strip everything away from you? Well, a bit like you just said then. I I honestly had this dream. I was never going to be a professional football player, but it was like my social life was mm. everything football related. Might be like rugby for you guys. I don't. Mm. Do you ever do your sport? No. No. Do you sport? <laughs> but football. <Nope>. For, <laughs> no, but football for me was everything. It was literally mm. where I grew up in Essex. It was you know, four or five days a week football. That's all I did, mm. being around the, the guys and everything. And so when that was taken away, it was it was difficult. Yeah, really, really hard to take. Right. And that's actually how I found music, weirdly enough. Is it? Yeah, because I I used to score all the goals. I was like the main man and I missed the banter, missed the dressing room, missed the vibe. And then I quit, um, was away with the lads and I was like, I, I, how am I going to spend time with them? And I hated the pub hated everything about the pub where especially where i was from it was very rough why why do you like it was this? very it was lots of if you don't mind me saying like well i am gonna say i don't care um it was it felt it was a it was a place where there was lots of drugs being taken yeah. people were drinking it was very aggressive, aggressive very fight fights every week mm. and actually i just didn't enjoy being in the pub i was too young really i was about 19 20 and i just never enjoyed it it just got very violent every time i went in there it was always like someone's gonna fight or and I just didn't like the environment. So I never went. But then one, all the lads used to go after football. So when football finished, I then started going to the pub more. And then that's when I saw a karaoke machine. And then it was like, well, I don't want to get in fights. I don't want to take drugs. I don't want to drink. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll sing for yeah. people. And that's all I did. I just to sing for the boys. And I used to always laugh and I'd do impressions and stuff. 
And that's kind of kind of how it all started then. And then is that really where it was? Yeah. It's literally like the beginning of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. Mate, yeah. setting that, the scene. I quite like that. That is, that is super interesting because, because you know, if people, people, everyone knows who you are, but X Factor is where you started. And yeah. what I remember it so well. You were in the X Factor peak, which was when it was booming. Mm. Like it was every... Friday night, Saturday, whatever it was, everyone yeah. was watching X Factor. I remember mental. We, but it was mental. It was like 14 million crazy. viewers. It's crazy, right? And I remember you so well because um Simon Cow and everyone always compared you. They said you're the best entertainer. And I remember and I remember it so well because you you seemed to get on so well with Dermot O'Leary on the show. Mm. Like you and him were buddy. So everyone just loved you. And you were this like personality that shone through. And maybe, I don't know, maybe if I don't know how I pitched this. It's, it seemed like potentially you didn't have the, the biggest training in singing no, and things no, like that. But you were the honest, best. I genuinely, yeah. was back, I, I know, by the way, I had no music. You've been training experience. in the pub. Yeah, I know. I, I genuinely, most of, the, most, of the, most of the guys that said I was good were absolutely off their nut going, you're amazing. You should do the X Factor. You're great, mate. <laughs> so a lot of the feedback that I was getting was just from people being drunk and pissed. Mm. Mm. And I was like, maybe I've got a bit of a talent. And then, you know, my, didn't, I, I, my family weren't the most supportive. In, and I don't mean that nastily. They just did they always felt that like, you couldn't go to the job center to become a pop star. No. So they're very like, let's be realistic, Ollie. You're not going to be a pop star. You know, this is like, it's not a job you can just get over the counter. You've got to like work for this. So I didn't really have that, but yeah, I didn't have any vocal training, nothing. Did no training, didn't know how to work my voice, didn't know what I was doing. So when I went on the X Factor, I, I was like, what am I doing here? I was like rabbit in the headlights looking around going, these are all fantastic singers, all trained. And it was kind of like getting my head around like, what have I, what's my USP? What have I got here? Mm. I have no idea why they've put me on the show. And then as soon as I cra the thing about me was, all of a sudden I'm backstage the, sh the, the lights are about to go down. All of a sudden, it's like, welcome to the X Factor. Tonight, it's the X Factor final. And we've got all the contestants. You know, and they start going through the names. That all voice. Of a sudden, is, is he here? Is that <laughs> <so> <laughs> unbelievable? <laughs> and then they were like, you know, and Ollie Mars, <laughs> and Stacey Solomon, Jed Wood. And it was all these names. And all of a sudden, the crowd were there. And I remember being backstage going, I fucking got this. This is it. Wow, you had that confidence like, there. But everyone else, all these other singers looking around, they're all like, fucking what am I doing here? Like, this is, this is it. And I was just like, guys, come on, this is, this is what we're born to do. Like if I can't do, if, I, if I've had all this dream for so long to, to be a singer and to entertain people and be a star, if I, if I can't do it now, what's the point of me being here? Mm -hmm. So I looked around, I was just like, I'm ready for this. And so I think Simon knew that in me. As soon as there was a crowd, if you got me to sing right now in front of you two here, I, I'm telling you now, I crap myself. Really? Genuine. I'm the weirdest person. I can't sing in a room with 10 people. But if you put me in a room with 10,000 people or 15 million people on TV watching, no problem whatsoever. I've got no nerves, no mm. problem. I mean, don't get me wrong, over the years, anxiety and fear and different things happen. You get older, you, you start not having, you start fearing more, weirdly enough. When you're younger, you don't care. But mm. as you get older, you, you, you think more about your got performance. more to lose, and, I Yeah, guess, more yeah. to lose. and. There's been a few things in my career that I've made mistakes and you start to doubt yourself anyway. But back in the day when I was doing, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, well, I'm just gonna have to go for it. Yeah, and that's but, kind of going back to what you were saying. Yeah, I came on the show. I was just like, do you know what? I'm just going to give it my best shot and eat for some reason. Every week people were voting for me. And yeah, I started to see actually what I bring to the table is, yeah, my vocal ability isn't as good as these guys, but can they perform as good as me? No. So that was kind of where it began and then and then i was learning about my voice and training it and then that was kind of it really it's a, it's interesting because um it's like a it's a different thing it's like a because you know the reason why i did um made in chelsea back in the day which it, by the way can i just say yeah i've never been a fan of made in chelsea right? uh, yeah. this is true this yeah, is true yeah, yeah. i'm gonna be honest never been a fan of it you know, lived, don't say you started watching get, it get out no i live in chelsea i live in i used i lived in chelsea for years right? yeah is that what turned you my off miss, no 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 so i got with my missus and um she's like you know you start to your your, your sky planner starts to change <laughs> gets filled up when your partner moves into your house i had this before yeah, nightmare your planner changes and i'm like what is this i've got, what I've is got this every shit? reality tv show yeah. there is and she's obsessed with Made in Chelsea. Is she? So when I told her I was coming to see you today, she was like, went crazy. Are you serious? So, oh my God, Jamie Lane. You can see Jamie Lane today. <laughs> like, yeah. so, oh my God, I'm so excited. Mate, she, so, she, I see you guys on social media. She, she, she watched, like, obviously, the early series. Yeah, You're I'm not sorry. obviously on it now. 
But now we've I'm I'm literally every is it Monday it comes Yeah, on? Monday. So we've we've got an ep- we've got two episodes to watch and she's like, right, when you get home tonight, we've got to watch the last two episodes of Main Chelsea. We watch it every week. That, I'm, mate, I can't believe I that can't you've been believe. brought over to the yeah. dark side. No, do you know what though? The, the, this is the thing. I'll be honest with you, like it's nice to talk about it, but X Factor itself, there was so many different emotions, don't get me wrong. I kept it very, very simple. So it was just the crowd and some cameras like it is now. I for- I forget, and this is probably why we do podcasts, because people forget that there's going to be thousands and millions of people listening to this. <laughs> do you forget what you're going to say? Say whatever you want, man. Say whatever you want. And I think that, that, that was kind of my, in my head, I'm like, look, there's there's like a studio audience of 600 people. That's who I need to entertain. I used to I used to forget there was millions of people at home. Because as ah, soon you play as, the some, room. You play as the soon room. as someone would say to me, yeah. There's 40 million people watching at home, Ollie. Good luck. I would absolutely pack myself. That's the moment I go, that's oh, so mean. wallop. That's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. wallop. That's a lot of people. Oh, wallop. That's my pants. Oh, wallop. Yeah, yes, that sir. is my asshole. <laughs> that's a lot of yeah. people. But, but dude, uh, the thing, the uh, there is an issue, right, with um, seeking outside, outside validation, which is then what happens is, is then that leads to potentially other things like, and this may be happening with X Factor. You do X Factor, you become... Famous and, and I, I remember a friend of mine, a girl called Roxy, who's actually been on the podcast now. She's actually written a book called Manifest. I don't know if you've seen this book. No. She's she's killing it, gone to America. I remember her doing a post about you and saying, and she was a picture of you and her together. It said, um, Ollie, give me babies, Murs. Like that that's wow. what it was. And so these you were just this icon for everyone. And that must be hard because you've gone from this normal guy who's just a bit of a lad, having fun, singing in the pub to performing X Factor, then going further than that. That's like a big rush of everything towards you at once. Did it hit you like a cannon? I mean, I ha- I have had this question years and years ago about being an icon and being an idol to people and people looking up to you and stuff. Then really, never really thought about it like that. Um, I I suppose for me, going back to what you were saying earlier, like yeah, it, I think when I come off the show, it did hit me like a, like a whirlwind of like wow, like what have I just done and achieved was pretty massive. Mm. But I was just so driven to be like, I wanted to be an artist and have an art album and a single out. So I just was straight into that. But I definitely think over the course of my career, I've had some real moments of like, like this is mental. And I, 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 I have to be, and, and yeah, I never got no media training. I never got, I mean, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. I, just, I was just riding the wave of having good people around me telling me what was great and what was not. But actually... There's no, there's no, there's no book that they give you on X Factor or yeah. any of these shows that Nothing. says, right, you're now going to be an idol to people. This is how you're supposed to act. And and a lot of artists get so much flack for what they've done off camera, what they've been caught doing or something. And I just think I do. Yes, there is a level of you have to be aware of what you're at, what you're doing, and, and you have to be accountable for your actions. But also, you also have to go, guys. These, you know, like someone like Bieber, for example. Yeah. I always, I always. I feel so much for artists that have been in the limelight since they were sympathize, 16. Sympathise, right? Yeah. Sympathise that he he's just living his life as a lad and, and uh, you know, trying to trying to enjoy himself, enjoy his life. And he's been caught out a few times doing some stuff. And, you know, he's allowed to make mistakes. You know, it's how he yes. grows from that. And and, and I, I've definitely made mistakes. But there's been loads of things that I've that I've been able to, to, to I don't know, just been lucky, really. But... When, when you say mad. mistake, well, I mean, when you say mistakes, what do you mean? Like, like was, you just said the word, the word saying you're an idol to people. It's so, look, I, I, I've only tried to ever be me, you know, but there's been times where, you know, I've gone out with the lads and got drunk and done stupid yeah. things. But, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It just everyone goes out and does that. But when you're in the public eye, it mm. can look a certain way. So you have to be very mindful of what you're I up think to. That's what I think uh, that's what I was alluding to. I mean, okay. For, but can I just say, sorry. Yeah. But, 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 but my answer to that actual question is that I was so lucky. And I don't know how old you were when you, you guys did Made in Chelsea, but I was 25, 26 when I left X Factor. Mm. I had already done mm. loads of growing up stupid things and got into trouble and... I went through all that stage of my life. Whereas at 26, I was like, right, I'm at this point now, which I think a lot of people are at 25, 26, when you're like, I need to actually sort my life out. I can't just I go out every wasn't. weekend. <laughs> yeah. well, no, well, well, there's, you know, I, I was like, I need to get, I need to get a house. I need to get some money behind mm. me. I want to have a career. I want to do something with my life. And that was the drive. So anytime I did anything mad or, for example, first year in X Factor, I was living in Brian McFadden's house in Hammersmith. My tour manager, Mark, mm. was friends with him and we were living out of 
Brian McFadden's house. That's hilarious. In Hammersmith. <laughs> That's hilarious. And he was in Australia at the time. So he was letting us live there. And, and I was writing the album and stuff. Mm. And I, 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 I guarantee, honestly, I must have only lived there probably a month, two months. I was like, I need to get out of London as quick as possible. I need to get back to Essex. I need to get back around people that I know and love. And I need to get my head back in the game. Because for coming off the X Factor, all the fame, the women, the money, the booze, the party lifestyle. Mm. I mean, I was going out to nightclubs and they were just giving everything to you. You know, mm. like whatever you want, enjoy yourself. You're Ollie Murs, you, mm. you know, we'll let you have a table, have whoever you want here. And I'm just like, whoa, this is mad. Me and the boys would all be, we'd all be putting like 15 pounds down, 10 pounds down and going, right, let's get around, lads, let's get around. You know, we was out in Essex before X Factor. All of a sudden now I'm getting buckets of vodka, buckets of alcohol. And I, was, and I took a wise man, for me in my own head to go, this is not for me. I need to stop living in London. I need to get out of here. Otherwise I'm not going to have a career. Mm. And that that was the first. And then, you know, don't get me wrong, over the years I've partied and gone out and I, I was able to do it at the times I was able to do it. But that was, a lot of big decisions were made because I was 26 in the right headspace. I was well, lucky really. That's hard, right? That That's what I was alluding to, right? Is that you're you're one of the lads you're you're the reason why you're a success on x factor and the success and because you're this entertainer you're this person who people relate to and just love but also you have this drive to succeed mm. so that combination leads to burning the candle at both ends which is never yeah. a good thing mm. and so that's what i was sort of saying is then how 26 is young having a wise head and saying i need to step out of here mm. that that's young I, I, it took me until about 30 to kind of mm. and i was burning the candle at both ends for ages and it took me to have like complete burnout to, mm. to really go, I need to stop all of this. And I know that you, you th what I love about yours is that you've spoken so openly about your anxieties and things like that. And, mm. and you've been hit hard with that over the years, haven't you, from stress or whatever. Yeah, is. but I think this job is, it's, like, yeah. it's not easy, man. People, um, and I'm not sitting here, buddy, I'm, I'm, I know that everyone has stressful jobs and everyone goes through, I'm just, I'm just able to talk about it. And, and people might think that my, I always, you know, look, I always get worried about talking about my job because I'm very lucky and very, very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. But the I don't know why you have to defend the, no, yourself. No, 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 yeah. no, no, because it is it, just the, the way I, I would feel about it. But I say to like, my job is a completely different job to one of my mates. I, mm. I, I have to stand in front of people all the time. I have to perform. I have to be a certain, I have to be that cheeky fun guy all the time. Does, doesn't always mean that I feel like that when I'm standing in that position. And there has been times, especially in the last five, six, seven years where there's been times where I just was like, I don't want to be here today. I don't, I don't want to sing today. I don't want to perform today. I don't want to do this. Yeah. But I, I almost had to put a character on. It's because that of, constant expectation that you're yeah. that, but you mm. actually don't feel like it. So you're like, oh God, can I not just like be me? Yeah, today? exactly. And there's times where my schedule was so mad that I'm getting pulled from pillar to post, from here to here to here to here. And it was hard. It was, but I just to get on with it. I was like, no, I need to keep doing this. This is for my career. This is for the benefit of my of my my career. I need to keep fighting. I need to go fight through the. And it was always at Christmas. I'd literally finish Christmas. Everyone would go back to their loved ones. Everyone would go back to their my manager, was my tour managers. Everyone would go back and do the thing. I'd shut the door at home and I would just literally like collapse. I was just so exhausted for like twelve months of craziness, and I'd get literally like two, three, four weeks off, and I'd 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 love it. I'd be like, oh, this is what I need. Pretty much like Father Christmas. Yeah, it was yeah, just kind of like, a, yeah. <laughs> no, because my, I mean, you know, people used to say I'm like the hardest, hardest working man in, in yeah. pop or whatever. And I genuinely, I, I would. And, 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 I'm not, and I'm not moaning about it because I, I had to do that from the benefit of my career. Yeah, but is that because you were always scared that you thought it was going to go? Of course. And by yeah. the way, there is also a very, very, part of me was always like, this could go at any point, even now, even at the age. But it doesn't. It, this is the funny thing. Your no, brand, it, it's no. so, why would it? And, and it's so funny. It, people, uh, we've spoken to so many people and, and typically people who are the most sort of successful are always scared it's going to go at one point. And, and I have that. Mint has that. We all, I'm sure all of us have that. But where does that come from? Because why is it going to go? Why would I, it go? I, honestly, because I genuinely... I'm, I, lo I can't believe I've ever been in this position. Genuinely, <clears throat> I, I still have that mindset of, yes, I'm talented. Yes, I know now more so than I believe in myself a lot more. I I'm a great entertainer, great performer, great singer, all of that stuff. I can, I can say that now and I can genuinely go, no, I am. Mm. I know I am. But there's always that I have to keep working hard. I have to keep doing this because it's all I'm good at. It's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I think that's because I've come from absolutely nothing. I didn't get, you know, I didn't go to a Brit school. I didn't get, 
I didn't get the, I didn't go to a theater, a theater school. I didn't get music lessons. I didn't get all that. I didn't get that. A lot of people would say, oh, you must have had dance lessons. No. Have you ever sung lessons? No. I don't know any of that. I'm just a guy that was singing in a pub that was working in a call center. So I don't want to go back to working in a call center. And I don't want, and that's not because I don't, you know, people work in call centers all the time. It's just, I don't want to go back there. Mm. I want to stay what I'm doing. And I, and I have this drive and ambition every day to just continue that. Um, who knows? Next year I might not be, but I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Where, when when the doors are shut at Christmas time, and I don't want to keep going deep, but this is just so only because look, dude, I, like only because it took me so long to be honest about like the way that I mm. felt and stuff, and I just and because <clears> I was doing main Chelsea and things like that. I mean, you've had your thing. You're, he's still not open at all. He's like a closed book. <laughs> shut, <laughs> he shuts everything down. But I, there is something so. Um, authentic about like talking about this stuff dude listen um we're gonna stop there for part one i want to come back in part two i want to talk about the new album yeah i want to talk about uh the voice talk about all this kind of stuff you're gonna stick around yeah of course i am not going this anywhere. is great this is great Love stuff it. this is great all right see you in part two everyone Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of Pro Part. Still here with Ollie Murs. Um mate, you you're 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 a, you, the voice. Yes. Hey, the voice. You were a coach on that. Is it fun is it interesting going from basically being on a talent show to then being a judge on a show? Cool. Yeah. Is it that, wicked? It's amazing. <clears throat> I remember obviously I'd been off TV for quite some time. That's funny because I feel like you're always on it. <laughs> no, I was actually off TV for quite a while because I did the X Factor, I hosted it. Let's not go down that route. Um, <laughs> Why not? What happened? Why not? <laughs> no, no, I did. There's a whole deadlock part that I got wrong with Caroline, and you yeah, know, it no. was it was a it was a it was a bit of a shitstorm. But just quickly on that, I know I, we on. don't have to go on it. I saw yeah. I saw an article that because I was gonna touch on it. No, you can touch on it. It's fine. Yeah, I just because th th you you did. There was this moment where you, there was a deadlock situation. You said, mm -hmm. and you got the name wrong. And you, I saw an article. You said that still haunts me today. Yeah, it annoys me. Oh. It's like why is it so bad? No, but it's not so. By the way, it it's wasn't not, so bad. The end of the yeah. world, but it? you know what? They the, the media and the papers and everyone made it really bad. It was like the it was like the worst thing that anyone had ever done on TV. It was it's like so ridiculous. ridiculous. I mean, it was honestly it was worst utter, thing it was that utter, anyone's done. No, it was. And genuinely, I remember. I remember when when you know, not that I'm his biggest fan at all. But when Piers Morgan comes out and defends <laughs> you, then you know you're you know like he actually. I think there was a there was a really horrendous uh, thing that had happened in Paris that weekend. And I think I was like the front page. And I think he was like, put it into perspective, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. what Ollie done on TV was nothing compared to what's happening in the world right now. And, and that and that for me was like, hurrah, please. Like this is just a silly little small mistake on the, sh on, the on a show called The X Factor. It's not not a life changing thing, but but it, it, it bothered me because I'm a perfectionist in most of the things I do. And I think all of us are. Mm. And when you make a mistake like that, if I could go back, if I could go back to anything in my career, that'd be the one moment I'd love to redo again. Very, very simple thing, but just, just a little, if I could just do that again, because I, it, 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 it no, maybe, maybe, I, maybe just maybe it might have, it might have changed the course of my I career. I think those, those things always happen for a reason though. Maybe you, you True, needed maybe that in that moment. Do you think maybe. it's a butterfly effect? Do you think that changed? Possibly. Well, cause saying that I stopped doing TV. I just thought, you know what? I'm getting away from TV. His mum's going to go and concentrate on music. Went and did another album. <laughs> back to Barbados. I was like, yeah, back to Barbados. <laughs> belly out. He needs to go, yeah, he needs to go to Harbour Lights. <laughs> yeah, just get great. drunk. Go and find like, that blonde guy, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> yeah, 50 bay, 50 bay, you know, you can drink. <laughs> I was there. I was like, I'm just going to go and enjoy myself. Just get a Juju's and just do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like, I need to go. I need to get out. I train, I, you know, I just, yeah, I need PTSD to get out. PTSD from that as well. You... Massive. Oh, by the way, huge. I remember. Yeah. So anyway, I went into, I went into ITV and we were, they were pitching shows for me to do and i was just sat there going no not doing it no not interested i was sort of getting the bug back for coming tv but i was like, oh, i'm not sure and then i walked to the lifts of itv and there's and if you've ever been in itv they used to all the lifts have all these pictures of all the shows mm. so the lift opened i was with a guy and i'm in i'm chatting to him and i said oh the voice i said oh it's, it's how was the first season he went yeah it went really well i said oh are you changing the, the coaches and he said yeah and i was being a bit you know facetious so i was like you mm. know maybe there's a space and i said um I said, oh, you've, I said, how did it go? Went, yeah, you know, we get, Gavin's going, we've got, you know, Will, we've got Jennifer Hudson, we've got Tom Jones, we've actually got a spare seat, we're just interviewing people at the moment. Mm. I said, oh, well, here I, he didn't think about interviewing me for it. And he just face dropped. He was like, are you actually interested? I was like, well, yeah. 
And he was like, oh my God, like we didn't even, oh my God. And he's flustered. He went, and by the time I'd got down the lift, got into the car, and his boss, Shu, had called us and said, mm. is Ollie being serious? And we were like, yeah. And then the, within two weeks, I was, I was given the job. Um, and it was just one of the moments, you know, like sliding mm. door moments. If I wouldn't have had that moment at the lifts or wouldn't have said what I was thinking. And I, you know, I just was, I just thought, well, if it's available. And I took the job and it was brilliant. But then I, I'm going back to mental health and all this stuff. And I don't want to dwell too much about it. But I remember getting the call and my manager remember this. I was in the car and she called me. I was with my mate Mace and I just picked him up. We're going out for a few drinks and we're driving and I get the call. I said, I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm getting told today if I get the job, I'm driving. Mm. And, and the call came through and it was like, Ollie, you've got the voice. They want you. You've they've signed the deal, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, amazing, amazing. I put the phone down. My mate's gone, get in there. <laughs> yes. Come on. I'm like, ha, yes. Ha, <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. <laughs> and I just had this just massive did. PTSD uh, moment. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the word. A massive like fuck i'm gonna be on tv again oh shit fuck what have i done i'm gonna say something wrong i'm gonna say something oh, wrong. i'm gonna, gonna fuck things up. Fuck it up i'm just, i've got no up. confidence my confidence went zoop yeah yeah i yeah. mean when it's these meetings like oh, i can sit next to tom jones no problem what do you want me to say you press the button oh, your, your, your chair goes the wrong way yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was just like, no. I, I just kept thinking what I'm, I'm gonna, i've done something right and then that's when i got really ill for like two three four weeks oh no really I was like, they've got, well, you start filming in like six, seven weeks. I was Stress. like, <gasps> and I got really ill. I said to Sarah, my manager, I was like, look, I need to go and see someone, man. I'm, I'm not, I'm not feeling good about this. Like I was close to just saying, I'm not doing the voice. Like just sign me off. Like I don't want to do it. But then once I had the chat and went and spoke to this lady, incredible. And by the way, I walked onto set. I reckon I was there. The, the camera started. I reckon the first couple of chair turns, I was a bit like, what is going on? And then it just clicked. And mm. then that was it. Then I the was, Ollie Murs came in. Yeah, like, here we sudden, go. Then all of a sudden it was back to the old me. And I just, I felt my flow and mm. I had a bit of banter with people and just started feeling it. And then that was it really. And then since then it's like, wow, just the, the show's incredible to be on. And I love it. And I think having Tom there and Jennifer and Will, all these guys, fucking great people. Legends. Uh, legends. Mm. And uh, I just was like, this is insane. And, and then that was it really. I just became their annoying I don't know. I just but, came this annoying guy for them, and I just wound them up all the time and had a bit of banter. You're so fun. good on it, but it, but it's interesting, right? Because you you've gone from that being on a show and then being a a judge and helping and and yeah. you know and mentoring people. Yeah. And and what you can do is because look, <clears throat> I mean I, I know you probably want to say doing X Factor must be hard because it's a popularity show, it's a talent show. Same as the, these shows are like talent shows and popularity shows. And so you can sort of coach these people in a way, knowing it from their position. Yeah, well, that was always my that was always my thing. I was like my go to pitch. Well, you know, none of these guys have been there before. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> I've been there. I know exactly what it feels like to be staying there. So uh, you want someone who's been in their shoes? Yeah, that's she's what picked me. Um, and then Jennifer was like, "Well, actually, I did American Idol." So I was like, "Oh fuck yeah, of course you did, bollocks." Um, it's like 320 million people watching you. Shut up, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> shut up, Jennifer. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that was definitely, for me, the, the, the going, being on the show like that, for me, was amazing. Even now, I love it. Like, yeah, just giving something back to the, to the contestants that I know I've been in that position before. Mm. It's, it's, it's a very powerful thing. And I really enjoy it. And I love working with people. I love giving something back to this lovely industry, an amazing mm. position that I'm in. And you know it's it's cool. I, I love it. It's a great job. I literally, I'm very very lucky again. Sit in that chair, press a button, sit next to Sir Tom, <laughs> yes, and I, I literally just have the best time mentoring and and having fun with the contestants. It's changed a bit over the last couple of years. It's annoyed me slightly, but you know we haven't been able to work as closely with the contestants due to COVID and different oh, restrictions shit, yeah. on the show. So it hasn't been as fun because mm. we, we don't have that interaction connection. interaction as much and you always you're a football a player you want to be part of that team yeah I'm, I'm i'm you know i'm all hugs i'm together i'm like it's all work together here you know it's like group hub guys let's all get in you know i'm one of them types of people i like to be in the mix and mm. really help people and hands-on basically but with, with with this with the restrictions it always felt like you couldn't really have that connection with someone mm. and just you know feel like we're in this together come on we can we can win this you know so <laughs> last couple of years have been different but you know this year we're this year's show was great and I know that I'm signed up for the next series. So the next series is, you know, apparently it's just as, as free as it Him was. Amazing. What's yeah. Tom Jones like? Amazing. I love Tom Jones. Yeah. He's a legend. You know what? He, he he's sits, like he sits nice so still. 
Do you he know, sits, how does he sit that he's still? He's asleep. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's he's still. Like fake he's, he's not a, actually there. What's they what they call it when they? Yeah, the you're hologram. the only one there. He's a hologram. Yeah, it's a hologram. Yeah, yeah. Ollie, you're not on the voice. I'm not even it's there, mate. Even it's an hologram. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not me. I'm not there. He's not there. We're, just all, in, we're all on Zoom at oh. home. Oh, Mer still thinks he's on the voice. You're still in that wine shop that you were talking about. The wine cellar you were talking about. But no, Tom's brilliant, and Tom, you know. You, you sit there and ask him like you know, <clears throat> questions about his life or things he's experienced and the stories are incredible i also um i don't think when i when i heard this i was like this marry me is your seventh album yes seven i was saying this earlier the, you're like the Beatles. It's like it's like it's like a song. <laughs> but I mean, but you what are you? You've been in the industry what 11, 12 years? Uh, yeah, be my twelfth year. Yeah, twelfth year. You've done <clears throat> seven albums. Yeah, I know. That is a lot. It's crazy. I never. I honestly didn't. When you actually say seven, it's like wow, that's pretty pretty crazy. Um, but you know, it was just you get you you you're in the moment, and people always go, "Why did you do an album every year?" I, I was I did three or four albums back to back. Mm. And that was just because I was riding on the wave of the success and the music and the creativity was flying and we were just in and out the studio and it was a number one after a number one after a number one. So it was kind of like, I want to keep this going really. And then again, there was always that feeling of if, it, if it's not me doing an album next year, someone else is going to do it. Mm. So it was kind of like a drive and in a, you know, I didn't want to take a break. I didn't want to, I didn't want to relax. And then as the career developed, it was like, look, Ollie, you know, we don't need to do an album this year. You've got the voice, you're doing this, you're doing the X Factor. So we was able to take little breaks in between. Uh, but this is the longest break I've ever had doing this album. It's been like four, three or four years. 2018 was the last time I did an album. Wow. So I've had like four years now, three or four years to, to kind of get my head straight and figure out what I was going to do next. Because after you've done six albums, you're like, well, what, am I what else can I now? do now? Mm. That, that's brave, right? Because I, I, I know... We live in this uh, climate now where we're so afraid about being left behind. TikTok, this, this, yeah, this, yeah. you know, and and we're never getting younger. And so it, it's kind of like you're worried about keeping up with the trend. And mm -hmm. and I, I admire people who take a break. I, I still haven't learned that yet to take a break and mm. because I'm so worried about being left behind all the time. Um, so then when you come back to it now with Marry Me, you, you must be like, no, this is sweet. This feels good. Well, you, you, you know, go back to what you're just saying. Sometimes you need to take a step back to take two forward. And I needed to take a step back because one, I needed to get my knee sorted. I wasn't in a great place with that. And it's also- It's very important to take steps. <laughs> yes, sort that, exactly. Sort that knee out. Exactly. And I had, to give, I had to give love a chance to come in. I needed to open up the gates. And there was too much time where I was distracted by lots of other things, the mm -hmm. world, the, the, with how busy my life was. And I, I needed to take, I needed to open the gates and I needed that little break. And once I did, that allowed me to let Amelia into my life and actually go, you know what? I'm gonna really give this a chance. Not like in previous relationships or girls that I might've been dating where it was just like, there wasn't really, I wasn't giving them a chance at all mm. really. It was just kind of seeing you for six months and like see you later. interesting almost like. Yeah, it was kind of like just fun and I wasn't, I didn't see a future. It was, and, and with us with Amelia, it was like, I really need to commit to you and I, I really want to give this a proper chance because I see a future with you. And, and that was, it happened at the best time for me. So I wasn't even thinking about music at this point. I wasn't even thinking about my career. I was just like, I need to like sort my stuff, my life out. And I did, and I got an immediate came into it. And then, and then all of a sudden this happiness came and then the life just felt better. And, you know, my work life was always amazing, but my home life was never great. I always mm. felt really lonely and felt like I was never going to meet the one. I was always going to be, I was going to be just left behind and I was just going to end up being in really crap relationships where I just never worked. And then as soon as Amelia came into my life, I was like, oh my God, like. It's like a light bulb, isn't it? It's different. Yeah, a different, different feel. And, I, and everyone used to say this to me, you know, you get, I used to hate it. When it, you know when it happens, I know that light bulb will go off. I'm like, oh, fuck off, man! It's no, so I was just true. Like, I was like, yeah, whatever. And I was so anti it, and it's and I and I, I, I'm, I'm so. I wish I could go back to every single person that said it to me, and I was like in my head going, fuck off, because mm. I was like, you know what, you're a hundred percent right, mm. and and that is, I stand by it. You just know, you know when you know, and you know, it, it, I had to go through a few boundary, you know, a few. I had to go through a few walls to get to that point. But when I did, it was like, wow, this is it. And then that's kind of spiraled the next album really for me. Did you open yourself up before she came along or did you open nah. yourself up for her? Not, not like I did with Amelia, no. I mean, this was like full blown, 
you know, I, in previous relationships, it was all like private. Don't anyone to know. My fans don't need to know. You've got, I've got a girlfriend. Like I was very conscious of my career and your image. Yeah, image and career. That was, I was, yeah. that was my drive. And I was like, oh, I, I can't affect that. So you just have to be like a site. You can't, you can't be seen. Yeah. And that was wrong, so wrong. And so, but, it, but it was how I felt. And then when I met Amelia, there was no, I don't care. The whole, I want the whole world to know. I don't care who, I don't mm. care if everyone, I, I would have cared if all my fans just discarded <laughs> me, but I genuinely was like this, I need this girl in my life. And then that, that was the, the catalyst for me then to go, right, I've got, I've got a purpose again. I've got all my home life sorted now, finally. Now I'm ready to go back to music and back to my career. And then that was, and then the music just came. Not, well, it didn't come. I, I, I it was all potluck, but music came and then that was it. Really. It's amazing. I, dude, I had ex the same experience as you. I, I, I used to start having dreams that I was this guy left alone, no kids, nothing. Didn't really believe in monogamy. Couldn't understand that it, how you could like, how someone could change your life so yeah. you know, so amazingly that you would just be with that person. Sophie came into my life and holy shit, I just realized how much better she was than me. And, and I say to her, I don't know if you say, it, it's the, my biggest victory, my biggest win, you know, that I, that I was able to um, find Sophie because when you find that love, and some people don't believe in marriage and some people don't believe in all this kind of stuff, but I, you're getting married next year and, it's, mm. and that's, congrats, man. It's Thanks, so man. awesome. That moment when you commit yourself and you go, and you almost go, okay, I'm committing. Here we go. And you go into it. Even before you get engaged, stuff like that, that is such an amazing, like liberal moment, isn't it? Mm. Where you suddenly go, I don't need anyone else. I don't want to window shop anymore. I don't, I, yeah. I, this is the one for me. You suddenly feel free. It's weird. It's mm. weird, it isn't is it? It's weird, yeah. I, I honestly... It's incredible. It's, feel, it's feel when great. you stop thinking about what other people think and trying mm. to validate and actually go, well, actually, what do I care about? Yeah. Like, and the weirdest thing, the only person I, only person I care about who, who's got an you know, opinion on most things is, is my missus. And I, I, I genuinely do. I, 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 you know, for example, recently I'd done something and she was like, that's wrong. You shouldn't have done that. And I went to bed and I really thought about it. And I woke up next day and I had to like completely like go, yeah, you know what? You're right. Yes. Like I really, yeah, I really it's value um, her opinion. opinion on it and lots of mm. things and I don't know it's weird honestly like yeah it's been it's been insane I, I honestly thought I was gonna be, I, my biggest fear was that I would just be this alone I would be this has been pop star when I'm 60 that everyone remembered doing dance with me tonight heart skips a beat that was just literally was lonely living in that living in, in you know been married twice didn't really work out you know just went through some really shit relationships and just didn't have anyone to share mm. but that that love with for, for the rest of my life and yeah god who knows you know me and Amelia I, at the moment we're so happy who knows where the future holds but right now it's like wow I, my biggest fear isn't there anymore I feel like god if I'm with Amelia when I'm 60 I'll just be over the moon and just be so happy that whatever happened in my career it couldn't care less if I've got someone to share that with at that point in my life would just be amazing I hope so anyway that is is the album a sort of uh Shrine to homage, yeah, homage. You know what? It, it, I, I want to say, yeah, yeah, just to sound again. No, yeah, yeah. I think I'm it, gonna call this one uh, Marry Me. Is it for me? No, it's yeah. just it feels like no, it, it, if, if it, it's Marry Me is a title, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Marry Me was like, I, I look at it like this this album is me, it's about me as a fun, cheeky pop star who I've always been and wrote, and I think we've got some, a great album of work. And Amelia's definitely a little nugget in all of these songs. And she's a little piece of her in every single song. But it's it's almost like, if Amelia has any doubts of marrying me, here's my album. Cause you want to marry me, don't you? Cause I'm, I'm fucking good. Um, that's yeah. kind of my, 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 that's me being like cocky. Yeah. Um, but like, it's, it's not like a lovey dovey album. It's not an album that's like a testament to her. It, there's moments in the song like like for example i've got a song called marry me now when you listen to marry me it's how i would sing marry me not how uh, adele might sing marry me you know or if another artist uh, different artists have different stories to tell my marry me if you listen to the marry me song which is the you know obviously the album title mm. it's it's like a feel good very much like elton john you know i'm still standing kind of song it's like you know i think it's time you marry me like come on i'm a good i'm a, I'm a big deal you know mm. Flipping it around, yeah, it's almost. kind of flipping it and being cheeky, and and I did, and I although there is a lovely song in it called "Let Me Just Say," which is a ballad that I wrote 
for Amelia about us and in that moment on our wedding day and we first finally have get to- Have you had sex to it? <laughs> no, we haven't had sex to it yet, no. You know what, it's a, it would be a good album to have sex to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you're right. Do you might, think you're gonna sing it? Are you gonna sing it at your own wedding? You, you know what I thought- I, Come I, on, you got you to. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me and Tom. <laughs> you know what, the thing about me is, at every wedding I've ever been to, pretty much, not all of them, but, You've I always say, nah, I'm never going to sing, guys. I'm here to get pissed tonight and have a good time. It's not about me. It's about the other singers. And then, and then five pints in. Five, four or five pints Ollie, in. Ollie, give me like, a mic back. Yeah, yeah. Give me a mic and I'm on, the fo- I'm on there straight away. So if get it, off. So get it's off. My own, so if it's my own wedding. I have, I have actually said to me, look, we're going to book entertainment. And it, I'm sure I won't sing. But just so you're aware, you won't be weird if I get up and sing one or two songs at some point. Because mm. I know what I'm like. I'll get a few drinks down me and... Mm. And uh, yeah, the rest will be history. It's, I don't mind. I don't give a fuck. Man, I'll sing it no, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I, don't care. <laughs> I won't sing. My, by the way, I won't sing one of my own songs. Yeah, It'll yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, um, listen. I want to touch on one thing. Um, mm-hmm. Your your buddy Caroline. Yes. And um, I know you get emotional about these things. And wow, what a lady! What a woman! What an incredible mm. person! Um, when all of that came out and you suddenly read, that must have been the most shattering thing to you. And I it was can't... awful. Yeah, it was. Tr- it was truly awful. I think. Um, I think when you, you know, I, I actually didn't have no idea. I didn't. I knew it was obviously bad at the time with what I was reading in the media, and obviously I'd reached out to Kaz and said, you know, I hope you're okay. I'm here for you. You know, I'm not reading all this shit. You know, I'm I'm there if you need me. And then you know I was on away in Bali, and then heard the news, and then it was just like, what the fuck? You know, whole sort of. I don't know it was everything just stopped and then i was with amelia and yeah i just just cried for like three days just solid i just couldn't stop crying and um you know just just thinking about what i could have done or you know i don't know just all the questions go through your mind you start thinking of her family thinking of her friends or close close friends i mean yeah, me and me and kaz were friends and I'm not gonna. We're not. We weren't best friends. You know, she had close best friends, and we were really good friends. We were close, but uh, you know, she had so many people around her, and I hadn't seen her for quite a while. So it was just really tough to take. Yeah, mm. it was. It was a hard time. It still is a hard time. I think it has every day. Weirdly, it's just moments just pop in your head. You know, you think, ah, oh, you know, what would she be doing now on social media? Like, what would she be doing on TV? You know, what would she be up to now? Would she have? settle down again would she have got married or what you know would she have had kids you know all them sort of questions um and it's upsetting right because we all deal with grief in different ways mm. and i think a lot of the time what happens especially in these situations it's like anger and frustration why why yeah. why and 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 that's what's really hard and i don't know how you know alex and i spoke on this alex has dealt with grief in his life with his mum, and and it's it's hard how different pe- people process it mm. right and um how did you process your grief? Oh, good question. Um, I don't think I've really processed it, to be honest with you. Um, I think I, how, how mm, I, I think I've had days where I've questioned, not, I've, I've never really, I probably questioned myself going, what could I have done? I wish I, I'm more angry at myself. Um, because I felt like I could have done more. And I think everyone would say, no, you don't be stupid, Ollie. You know, there's nothing you could have done. But I knew I could, I, I feel like I could have done more. Um, but then, I don't know, I've never been through anything like this before in my life, ever. I, I, I don't think I'll ever feel, I don't know, maybe I will, but, you know, I don't know. I don't think I've really processed it, to be honest mm. with you. I'm just kind of living each day and just getting through it and, thinking about it as and when and and i don't know i don't know whether that's the right thing or not i don't know i i haven't re- haven't gone to see anyone i haven't yeah. i've only spoke to friends very briefly um i talk about it to people when they ask me or we chat about it now mm. but um yeah it's just hard man it was it's, it was it was like and, and and what people don't realize is though because you guys work together and things like that you almost get a deeper connection. So, cause you, you, you it's very hard, you, you know, we sit with mates and things like that in a pub or whatever, you never really go deep. When you work together, you really go deep with each other and you mm. talk about everything and anything. Well, we, we had like, you know, me and Kaz were, were like brother and sister. Yeah. 
And people always used to say we were together, but we were like brother and sister, really. But we used to argue, we used to fight, we used to get on, you know, and it was like, it was it was a roller coaster. It all, you know, it was amazing. And we were going through such, we had such incredible times. And then, you know, like when you, when you go, when you, when something like this happens, you, you find old memories and pictures. And I think that's been, been nice to, keep hold of their memories you know and there's a there was a lovely my manager sarah actually contacted her and said to her would you do a piece for ollie on his tour last tour it's funny because i am um, i got really into lo- um when i had my knee operation i really got into love island mm. and uh i i'd not watched it for a while and then i texted her i said oh kaz i'm fucking loving you on love island she's like you gotta come on and do the show i was like no nah, no nah, i can't come on and do the after sun i've only just started watching it um and it was just nice to sort of, I don't know, just, and she, you know, it, it, it's funny because we, we tried to catch up with each other that year. I said to her, come and see me, come and see me. So I really want to see you. I've, unfortunately, I'm at home in Essex. And, you know, I, that whole time I was like, come and see me. It's before it all, all this, all the stuff came out about the, what happened. And I was like, come and see me. And she, and she planned to come and see me. And I, I booked, um, I managed to get some lunch bought in so we had lunch when she came so i couldn't do anything because my knee was bug buggered and um she never turned up and, I, and that was the only last time that uh that i would have seen her um and she yeah she didn't she didn't come and it was funny because then i looked at the newspaper and it, and then the, that night she was supposed to come it was typical kaz you know she was out at some like glamour awards like some big night and i was like oh, okay she texted me and again so i'm so sorry i couldn't make it i had plans and i was like no worries um, I just wish I would have uh, pushed that through mm. and seen her again. But, you know, I was going through recovery and, I, I, you know, and then I've reached out anyway. And then I reached out to her with what happened. And yeah, just such a shame. She was a, she was a lovely and amazing person. And, uh, you know, she didn't, yeah, I would just would love, love to her to still be here now mm. and be part of our lives. You know, it's just a shame that she's not here. And I and I and I think more for her family really, and and the people she left, especially her sisters and mm. her family and her brother and stuff like that. It's her mum and dad. It's just so, so hard. And I saw the amazing documentary, dude. Yeah, her, her the amazing documentary on her and things like that and her family and stuff. It just yeah. I mean, the reason why I brought it up is just because um, you know, it's just it these these situations are just so frustrating. It's just like how can this keep happening? And and you know, and it it sort of. You know, well, I didn't know. I saw some stat the other day. Someone was talking about it. Um, it was actually at the Pride of Britain that the the biggest killer under thirty five, under thirty five, suicide. suicide. Crazy. Um, it's it's bananas, right? And it's like, yeah. what is going on? And you know, and, and I don't want to keep going down and 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 gloomy, but you know, kids. We had a guy on um, called Ben the other day whose brother took his own life, and he was like fourteen years old. It's like, what? Mm. What is going on? It's just wild. So. I mean, the point is, is the reason why I love doing the podcast like this with like yourself is that we can sit here and we talk about it. And, you know, we may, people may be strange or not as close or whatever it is, but at least you're, you're talking about this kind of shit. I yeah, think no, no. Thing. And it is, it's, I, I, you know, like when I talk about Kaz, part of me can't help but smile because I had some of the best memories of my life with her. Things I'll never, ever forget. We shared some amazing times together, some amazing moments. So like, that's the moments that I cherish every day. Mm. And, you know, I, I, you know, I scrolled for her Instagram and went all the way back to like 2015 and 16 when we were working with each other and just found loads of mad, um, you know, mad, mad stuff and things that she'd posted about me. And, and, uh, there's, there's one, there's one, that I, there's one thing that like, you know, like I found, I found, a, I found this. It's just Kaz with a sad face saying, we miss you, Owls. Oh. And, um. You know, it's like little things like that that um, that I keep. You know, that I remember and think. You know, like it's hard looking at that type of stuff. Jeez, yeah, like, man. Yes. No, but cuts. like that. That for me, it's like wow. Like yeah, yeah. You know, she. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. It was just it was just lovely. I went through and found so many old. And things. it was such a big moment for you that you guys went through together, yeah. right? And that's yeah. why it holds such a position in your life. Nostalgia, though, does that, right? Oh, uh, my God. yeah. You're I mean, you're the big one on this. I. Side. I actually struggle to look back at old photos, videos of my mum. I can't do it. Can you not? Almost, it's too like, 
it's too much of a really you can mm. so, so alex, alex says well alex you can you, you know you're, you're well, my, i get i guess yeah i mean the hard thing i guess with suicide is you feel like it's preventable with my mum that wasn't the case she obviously died of, of a brain tumor but yeah like with nostalgia and stuff like i really can't i struggle looking back at stuff mm. like it just fuck, it, it's because my i think i have like a defense mechanism my brain goes don't look at that mm. <laughs> that's gonna fucking make you cry your eyes out yeah Aww. it's gonna make you feel shit so i just mm. don't a lot of the time mm. the, the the thing that freaks me out is i know on my phone i've got a whatsapp conversation a history of like for years of like chat between me and my mum. you there. don't look at it i don't think i can i don't think i can wow man at some point I, maybe but what's i don't know what's the why would i do it i guess well, I don't know. It's one of those things that's cathartic, maybe. Maybe it's the way to, to, to release. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not. I think maybe it's a slight sign that I haven't fully addressed everything because you should be able to to look at these things. Obviously, it's always going to make you emotional, but... Mm. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I would... I, I had, like, conversations with Caroline that I had, and I, I, I used to look at them quite a lot. And then I think that in the end, it got every time I looked at it, I got emotional all the time. And mm. a bit like you, I just, I think when I updated my phone, I just chose not to, not to have that anymore. Mm. Wow. And then part of me was like, oh, I wish I could go back now and look at it. But then I was like, but then you may be holding on to something, right? Possibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was, I was listening to old voice notes and her talking, and <laughs> oh, and it was just a bit weird. And I not weird. Like I just wanted to hear, oh, no, like, Kaz talking to me and in, in like saying something, and I'd be like, oh. I need to, I, and I, I just deleted it in the end. Um, and I, I just felt like it, maybe it was part of me that needed to move on a bit. But, yeah. I, but I've got all these old memories that I've kept and photos that I've got and, you know, and, you know, some amazing videos that fans send me of moments that we shared together. And I'm like, you know, they're the, they're the moments that I want to remember, Kaz, mm. and the times we had and the, yes, yeah, it's, it's sad, but no, I've just- What is the, what is the thing that no, she so wrote? Kaz, Kaz wrote this for my tour. And obviously when, you know, when she sent it to me in 2018, 19, I just put it in my tour book. I was like, ah, oh, it's really lovely. Oh, thanks, Kaz, you know. But then when you, when you, when you see someone go through, well, going through what she, you know, yeah. So I don't, can't even say the words. Um, mm. But obviously now she's not here. I then got the, I went through and remembered what she wrote. And it was like, wow. Um, um, when I met Ollie for the first time, it felt like I'd met my soulmate. Uh, not in a weird way. It was just like meeting someone I'd known all my life. I've never laughed as much as I did in 2011 when we first hosted The Extra Factor together. And that experience will always stay with me forever. Um, he's one of the most talented people I've ever met in my whole life and he puts 100% into everything he does. He keeps the whole team going and for that I forgive him for his dad jokes. Caroline Flack. Um, and like, the the thing is when, um, like knowing obviously the pain she must have been in to take her own life, to hear her say like i've never laughed as much as i did in 2011 mm. and that you know that she had and that and that memory of us being together was one of the moments she, you know i mean i just like little things like that just mm. you know like I'm, I'm really trying to keep it together here but that that for me was a nice memory to keep but um Dude, it's but everything she said is everything that i thought of her as well I really appreciate the fact that you can talk about it. From yeah, here. and I and so I imagine how hard it is, right? It is hard. Um, I am trying to keep. I'm trying to. Keep yeah, positive. and also you feel a bit like you don't. You feel a bit like you don't know how to say it. Or it's a vulnerable. It's yeah, a vulnerable, it's vulnerable place vulnerable. to be. Yeah, sad, talking to strange, not strangers, but it is. But it is. That's exactly what it is. Uh, but you know, I, you know, I can't not talk about it. Yeah, I have to. You know, otherwise it's just going to eat me up. And there'd be moments where I'm at home and me is like, "Are you okay?" But then there's moments where. I'm at home with Amelia and she'll be like, why are you quiet? And I won't even say it. I, don't, I won't say anything. I mean, she'll just walk off and leave me. She knows that I'm having yeah. a moment or I'm thinking of Kaz. Um, but yeah, she's, listen, Kaz was amazing. Wonderful person inside and out. You know, she had her flaws like everyone. And, but 
you know, she was my friend and I, and I absolutely adored her. And, um, well said, know, I, dude. I, I think I think of her every day, and I hope, you know, I hope her family are okay. And I'm always here if they need me. I've, I always reach out to Christine when, when I mm. get a chance. And you know, it's just just awful that such a such a bright like, soul. You know right? what? Like that's the thing. You know, so much was written about Kaz, and and and, but you know what? Like anyone that knew her or been around her, she was literally like the life and soul of the room. Like she was. The la she had the best laugh she had the you know and i know when you know when when people die everyone says the same but it really is true like these people have such a big impact on your life personally and she was literally like she'd be the first person on the dance floor she'd be the loudest in the room you know if there was an argument she was shouting the loudest you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, she yeah. was she had everything she was just this bundle of of awesomeness and she was you know she did the career she was she was so great at job she was so good at presenting Mm. I mean, literally, so good. Yeah, she was insane. She made it look so good, and I was just to make it look so easy. And there's me, literally, like she didn't, she didn't mess there's up. There's me yeah, fucking yeah. messing it up for her. Do you know what I mean? And even then, like I remember her coming up to me like the week later, like that that week, and she was just like, "Ollie, like it's cool. Like I've always got you. I'm here. Like we'll be fine." And you know, she did, and we we got through it together. Yeah, amazing. And, um, listen, you know, like, she's amazing, and I never, yeah. She as well said man that no, that's from the heart i really appreciate that we're going to try and segue in in some sort of way into our game i, I don't know how we can go into it <laughs> so, come yeah. on let's, let's yeah. leave on a positive so, we don't, we can, we're not going to do it we're not going to do it we're going to oh, leave it no really? we're going to leave yeah well, we don't do you know in all honesty this is this is such can like we a, just put it in somewhere in the start because I, I don't know I, for my thing is that, dude honestly just I, I, this podcast has been so great like you we get the reason why i love podcasts is you get to sit with different people and chat and hear about their lives i love people that was such a great way to finish it and to talk about your album and things like that and the way that you impacted her life because that's such great words dude i just think that's a perfect podcast and honestly and and um i really appreciate for you for sharing everything and being vulnerable it's very hard to be vulnerable in these uh things with cameras and strangers and whatever it is mm. um but mate i, I think you know the the reason why uh, you have the success you do is because people want to work with nice people. That's what they want to do, and and that's obviously who you are. So I really appreciate that you you've come on and Thanks shared for having me. It's been, it's been wicked, man. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Hey, listen, <laughs> uh, we can go. Uh, you're on tour as well next year, aren't you? Yes, I'm going to be on tour. So please come along. Can we you, actually? Can we? Of course you can. Yeah, come on, please come. Wait, <laughs> come to the tour. Come to the tour. Come and come and see me live. I'd love you to. Yeah. My my fiance Sophie, she said I could tell you. She used to have a poster of you on her wall. No way. Yeah, she wow. did. She did. She's there. like, you can tell him. Like, she, and she went. She, she went to your. We should do concert. a wife swap at some point. <laughs> Let's do it. Done. <laughs> done. Done. Amelia would be obsessed with you because you're from Bailey <laughs> Chelsea. Same with me. Don, let's do the TV show. <laughs> do a show. day in the life of just the one swap. Can I sit in the corner? Yeah, you, you can sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Uh, Ollie, listen, I really appreciate you coming on, mate. That's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, listen, go and check out your new album. Go and get tour tickets. Go and check out your social media is the funniest thing in the entire world. It's so good. All your Likewise, yours is great. Oh, and mate, you're a listen, genius. You guys are brilliant. I appreciate it, mate. Thanks Thank for you having so. me. Thanks, Thanks everyone. See you next week, everyone. Goodbye. Oh, mate. Woo.